Hey, Coach, as good as you guys were at the beginning of the year, your front court has just improved so much, whether it's Kai or Jericho or Brock. How much more balanced, how much more dangerous is this team now? Well, I think that's a great point, Dennis. You know, just uh, understanding that this game, uh, college basketball, is, is so much dictated by guard play. Uh, but those guys in the front court, you know, they make a world of difference. You know, obviously we don't win the games in Kansas City without Jericho, without Kai, uh, Brock's contributions. You know, Greg's been really good for a lot of this year. So, you know, those are guys, I, you know, I think that they can be difference makers for us. You know, most teams are going to have pretty steady, um, you know, pretty impressive guards. Um, I, you know, I think that we do. But, you know, those guys, you know, when they're playing at their best, particularly Jericho, Kai, Greg, uh, Brock in his own way, um, that, that, that allows us to, to separate from some teams. Ryan Davis, please. Hey, Shaka, uh, we all know the story of the last few seasons. And so I wonder how much are you hammering on these guys of, you know, you only get very few chances at the NCAA tournament and you've got to maximize it when you get there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we talk about that, Brian. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, fortunately we have some guys that have, have lived that. It's one thing to talk about it. You know, it's one thing to hear it from a coach. Uh, but what's way more important is, you know, guys coming together and, and communicating about that reality um, at the same time, you know, my experience is that when you get to this time of year, when you get to the NCAA tournament, you also don't want to play out of avoidance. Um, and it's easy, you know, I don't really, you know, read the internet, but it's easy <clears throat> when you get caught up in reading stuff, listening to stuff to start to worry about, well, what if this happens or what if that happens? And the reality is we got a basketball game for 40 minutes against Abilene Christian on Saturday night at 9.50. And, you know, they're a really, really good team. They play extremely hard. They're well coached. They're skilled. They're disciplined. The long trek you guys took to get here and the, and the hard times you went through to get here, how you still kind of have that relationship where you can get after each other. Yeah, I mean, we were kind of at each other's throats even during the, the Oklahoma State game. Uh, I was mad at him. He threw that behind the back pass. And it was actually a terrific pass if you're passing to – you know, the five guys in the world that have the best instincts and hands. Um, but if you're passing to anyone else, it was just too quick, too fast. Um, but, you know, the foundation of our relationship is love, respect, and trust. And when you have those things um, and you want the same thing, then, you know, it, it's okay when you disagree and you, you, you kind of go at each other a little bit. Um, I really appreciate Matt because he's been very, very receptive um, during his four years uh, on our team. And he's a guy that he's a peacemaker. You know, he tries to help other guys, um, you know, whether they're in conflict with, you know, other teammates or with coaches um, you know, he's a guy that has always tried to bridge gaps and that's important. And I really appreciate that about him, but I love the fact that he's playing with so much joy. Um, you know, I, I might've mentioned this, but, uh, you know, once again, in the Oklahoma state game, he made a basket and then he's running down the floor and he jumps up in the air like a deer. That's the second time he's done that recently. And when you see him doing that, you know, that he's, he's in flow. You know, he's he's really in a good place. Justin McComas, go ahead. Shaka, this Abilene Christian looks like a defense that's comfortable kind of gambling and scrambling, and they really try to pressure the ball, but they'll fly around and take some chances. What are the things that you guys need to do offensively to make sure you're getting into your flow and that aggressiveness? And, and how important are attacking closeouts? It seems like there's going to be a lot of closeout type situations around the perimeter. Yeah, that's really important, Dustin. I think for us, making sure that we move the ball uh, because they do a great job of helping, but then they also do a great job of running out and contesting threes. Um, so we can't hold the ball. We've got to move it. Uh, you know, they, they do, they definitely do a lot of denial. So 
you know, we have to understand that we don't see that much in the Big 12 um, with people denying us, uh, denying passes. Um, the good thing is, you know, I, I think our guys, you know, have a sense of, of how to flow even when a pass is not available. Um, now, we still have to go and do it in the game. But uh, they've got a heck of a defensive team. You know, I think, Dustin, one of the big keys is for our three guards um, to take care of the ball and make good decisions. Um, you know, those are not the only guys on our team that, you know, could potentially turn the ball over. But those are the three guys that have the ball the most. And we just have to really emphasize to them making good decisions. Roger Wallace, please. Hey, Shaka, you mentioned avoidance. This is kind of the ultimate test in the tournament. How do you get guys to play either grind it out like the tech game and, and play that style or up and down the court like Oklahoma State, but still uh, get lost in the game knowing what's on the line? Well, I mean, I think it starts with understanding that the game is not determined. That's why we play the games. And I think it's easy for folks that are not playing or coaching in the games to say, yeah, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And I filled out my bracket and these are the teams that it's TBD. It's TBD. Whoever plays better is going to win. Whoever plays harder is going to go get the loose ball. Whoever runs faster has an advantage in transition. And, you know, I think as a player, certainly as a coach, I, I believe as a player as well, if you can get to a place of full acceptance that it is TBD and that what you do and what you control um, plays into that but doesn't fully determine it by yourself, then you can just go after it. And that's the fun in playing sports. There's no fun in playing sports if you know for sure what's going to happen. You got to go after it. You get to go after it. And we're fortunate to be in this situation here in Indy to have this opportunity. Sam up in Dallas, go ahead. Uh, hey, Shaq, I'm, I'm asking this question on, on, on behalf of a colleague. Um, from the outside, we've seen the inspiring story of Andrew Jones fighting back from cancer and becoming a key player on the team. Uh, how has he inspired you personally? Uh, he inspires me personally all the time. The other day before we played Oklahoma State in the championship game, I literally, you know, I just kind of found myself next to him coming out of our, our initial huddle. Uh, and they, the starters were walking onto the court. And I just, I just said, man, I'm just, I'm really glad to be here with you. Uh, when you saw him in a hospital bed after he was diagnosed, um, and you saw what he was going through and the look on his face uh, for him to be out here playing, playing so well, playing in the NCAA tournament. Um, it, it's, it's awesome. Uh, there's, there's really no other way to describe it other than, um, you know, I'm very, very grateful just to be here with him and, and for him to get to experience all this. Kirk Bowles, go ahead. Yeah, Shaka, I wonder if you can sense when your team – may be a little uptight. Uh, and do you address that in your pregame speech? Do you have that all planned out? Yeah, you can sense that, Kirk. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting because um, a lot of times we generalize about the whole team. But sometimes, you know, if the team's uptight, that means certain individuals are uptight. Um, and it's typically not the whole team. But it's, you know, one or two or three key guys that, uh, you know, can really set, set the thermostat of your room. So uh, for us, you know, it's Wednesday. Uh, we play in three days. You know, I, I think it's really important, you know, us just spending time around our guys and helping them understand, again, the things that are under our control. Um, you tend to get uptight about things that are not under your control. Um, and things that are not yet determined or decided. So, um, and that's easy this time of year when you have all this talk about brackets and uh, picks and who's going to win this game or that game. Uh, but you definitely can sense it. There's a couple different ways to address it. Um, and we certainly try any way that's, that's possible. But at the end of the day, when the players are able to help each other, like Courtney Ramey, the way that he helped Matt Coleman at Oklahoma when Matt was struggling 
the way that Courtney encouraged him and helped him stay in the fight, uh, that's by far more powerful than anything that I can do as a coach. Steven from the AP, go ahead, please. Hey, Shot, I got a wacky question for you. Everybody knows the One Shining Moment song. You've had teams on it before. I'm curious, do you, do you use it at all as inspiration for players? It's inspiration for me. Man, I mean, I that's one of my favorite NCAA tournament memories from when I was – before I was even in coaching uh, was, was just watching that. And it's, and it's kind of a bittersweet thing because as a fan, I remember watching and it's like you don't want the song to end because when the song ends, the season is over. Um, we've used it a little bit in the past. We've not used it this year yet. Um, you know, we, if we're able to win, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of time here, uh, but the focus is, you know, obviously on this game and, um, you know, then, you know, maybe later in the, in, in, in the month, we can do that. Joe Cook, please go ahead. Shaka, you talk with all your big, you know, one and done players, how about their best basketball is not going to be at Texas. And oftentimes people associate that with the on court play. But with a guy like Greg, how does making sure that he develops, you know, between the years, how does that help him both here and then also going forward in his basketball career? And what have you done in the past week to kind of help that process? Well, you know, I think a, a big part of it is learning to come to terms with reality. You know, whatever is, is happening in the present moment, you know, I, I – I don't think any of on us on any of us on this call quite understand what it's like to be 16, 17, 18 years old and already, you know, projected to be an NBA player. Um, you know, that's that's heavy stuff. And, you know, that can certainly wreak havoc on, on the mind and, and the ability to be present and the ability to accept reality. So, um, you know, Greg's been terrific the, 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 there's a picture of our team in Kansas City on Saturday you got the stuff you know falling from the ceiling all that and just a look on Greg's face of elation uh, because he enjoyed winning and being with his teammates winning a championship and that was not contrived that was that was real um, you know he's he's been really high energy since we got here in Indy so I think what he's learning <laughs> which is pretty awesome is, you know, to embrace and, uh, and appreciate, um, you know, teammates at this level, um, the opportunity at this level. But you're absolutely right. I mean, the development of all these guys, you know, whether they play professional basketball or whether they go into, you know, some other job after college is, is more than anything between the years. And I, that's the part I really, really enjoy. I have time for one last one. Lucas with the undefeated. Go ahead, please. Scott, you make these, uh, these Zooms too short, man. These guys got questions. <laughs> hey, Shaka, thanks for doing this. Um, it's been 10 years since that uh, VCU Final Four run. I'm just curious what stands out to you from that run 10 years later and what it means for you to still maintain uh, close relationships with a lot of those players on that team. I mean, that's what this is all about, is the relationships. And, you know, it, it's... I remember when I worked for Billy Donovan, he told me once, he said, when you win the national championship, it's awesome. It's great. There's all this, this, this positive stuff that comes from it, but you also get the sense of, is this it? Is this, is this all it is? Um, and you know, he, after that, he talked about the relationships. And so that's the most powerful thing is, you know, the, I don't know where that trophy is. I don't know where that net is. Um, you know, I, I don't know a lot of things from that, uh, but I, the, the relationships with those guys is awesome. Um, Joey Rodriguez called me at like 1.30 in the morning after we won the Big 12 championship on FaceTime, and he was in a club in, Miami, in Orlando. Uh, he was literally at a nightclub. There was, there was loud music, all these girls around him. That, uh, I probably shouldn't even uh, get him in trouble with that, but um, – I mean, that's him. 
you know, and just to be able to continue to have that connection and communicate with guys like that is pretty awesome. Hey, Matt, you said uh, you said last week, this is a time where you, you know, just hoop and, and, and have fun. Boy, you you showed that on, on Saturday. How much fun is this? But how much do you feel are on your shoulders and, and that backcourt when everyone talks about it being a, you know, a guard tournament? Um, it's just it's what you it's what you want. Um, and I, I like our chances every night, no matter who we play against. When I look to my left, when I look to my right, um, I, I love our odds because I, you know, I have faith in my teammates and myself that we have the ability to uh, to put ourselves in the best position to win every night. Bob Ballou, please. Yeah, Matt, can you can you just take us through? Uh, Shaka was just saying you guys were even at each other's throat. Uh, a little bit on on Saturday during the Big 12 title game. Can you can you explain what the best part of your relationship with Shock is over these last five, six, seven years? And does he ever bring up Joey Rodriguez? Is is that a guy y'all ever talk about from his from his VCU days? Um, well, to for the start of your question, uh, it's just been a lot of like growth and a lot of um, just what you expect for a relationship to to happen when you're uh, you're put in a gym together for four years um it's a, it's a lot that you know you held to a, a different standard um especially when you're the starting point guard like the accountability um the swagger that you must have the the grittiness that you need to have and the overall seriousness that you need to have each and every day and hold your teammates to that same level and that's like the biggest thing that coaches brought out of me um through these four years and then when it comes to his point guards uh He's probably talked about all of them, but like the the two that I have in common with that he knows and that I know, Darius Thies and Briante Weber uh, are ones that we conversate a lot about. Nick Morrill, go ahead, please. Yeah, Matt, it's been about, what, three, three years now since y'all were last in the tournament, um, that overtime loss to Nevada. Just wondering, you know, what, what it means for you to be back now and, you know, has that loss, you know, been kind of at the forefront of your mind now that y'all are back and preparing to play again. Um, it means everything, you know. As a as a high schooler, like when you come to college, you uh, this is what you want. You want to be able to compete for a national title, to play in March. Um, and like the last, like you said, the last time we were here was my freshman year, and we, we lost in overtime. And I just I want to to grow from that. You know, I want to survive in advance and, and move forward and and I have an opportunity to just keep winning and compete for something bigger than a first round exit. <laughs> Senator, go ahead, please. Yeah, Matt, with uh, their big guys with uh, Pleasant and Colton Cole, um, Shaka said there have been times when you guys have played with played against a lineman of five guards. Uh, how good is it to have a 6'11 and a 6'10 at your disposal uh, to clog up that lane against the big guys Kai, with Kai and Jericho uh, on your team? I mean, just the way that Jericho Sims have just been dominating uh, these last couple of weeks have just been, uh, it's been, it's been happy to see just from me, just since he's uh, my fellow senior, uh, I'm happy for him just, just knowing that like he's always had that in him and he's finally becoming into himself um, and it's, it's good. And then you have a guy like Kai Jones, who's just, um, a six eleven, six ten, a uh, long, athletic, um, forward wing, whatever, big guard. He liked being called a big guard, so I'm gonna call him a big guard. Uh, you know, it's, it's just good having you know having guys like that, uh, just to change the dynamic of of the team. Dustin, go ahead, please. Matt, you know, how much is this just about you guys? I know you've probably heard the scouting report in some detail already with the way ACU plays defense and the pressure and the turnovers and things like that, but how much is it just about you guys playing your style and how much is it your responsibility to make sure those guys stay loose and, and relaxed and what are some ways that you try to do that? Uh, I think 90% it's about us. Uh, you know, you respect your opponent, uh, you understand the scattering point, their strengths, um, but it's it's about us. All year has been about us. Um, the games that where we've been our identity and we've been able to uh, you know 
trust our coaching staff and respect the scouting report, which put us in the best position to win or either to or to win. Um, it's 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 always going to be about us because we control our destiny. Um, we control what we can control and all the other things, you know, you just approach it with the best mindset and ability and you put yourself in the best position to come out with the result that you want. And when it comes to keeping guys like poise, like even myself, it's been um, sorry about that. The lights just shut off. Uh, but even myself, you know, just sitting here since Saturday, Sunday night, um, just been wanting to, you know, a couple of days off, but I, I want to play um, ready to get this going and ready to get um, get this thing into motion. So for me, I got to I got to find ways to keep myself busy. Uh, but when it comes in, into the game, and uh, I think I do a good job of keep staying poised and I got a lot of teammates, you know, that, that could, uh, they get really excited, you know, and they get really lost in the loss in the game. So just doing what I've been doing all season, just keeping everybody poised and because they keep me poised when I need it. Adam up in the great state of Virginia, go ahead, please. Can you hear me, Matt? Yes. Checking in from, uh, from the seven, five, seven, man. Congratulations on your success. Yes, sir. Thank you. A uh, couple questions for you. You talk about this was your your dream. Uh, obviously, we know Shaka started reaching out to you as an eighth grader. I just wonder what your what your goals were, what your conversations were about March Madness. You know, as a kid playing high school ball in in Norfolk, and then also uh, you feeling a little bit of love from uh, the seven five seven, especially after the accolades in Kansas City uh, last week. Um, coach, you know, he was a Final Four coach at the time uh, when he was at VCU. Um, so it was somebody that has been to that, uh, made that, has reached that stepping stone. And, uh, you know, he's talked about it, what it takes, uh, how it felt. Just the biggest thing is just how it felt for him, for his players, for the people around him, and how it just opens up doors in, in life for uh, for everybody that's a part of that. And um, that's just something I wanted to experience. Um, and hopefully we can we can uh, experience that this year. And and I just appreciate everybody that's in my life um, that I know or that I don't know, but that's just showing love and appreciation for me and just had for my success because that just keeps me motivated, keeps me wanting to move forward and do more. Brian Davis, please. Matt, you, you touched on it a minute ago, but – I mean, y'all are kind of trapped. You were trapped in your hotel rooms for a couple of days. I mean, everything about this is staying loose and staying relaxed. How do you do that? You know, you, you still got three more days before you even play. How, how do you stay loose up there? Man, you just, you, you get creative. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, they gave us like a puzzle. I didn't open the puzzle. I don't never do puzzles. I started starting putting a puzzle together. Um, good thing there's like NBA basketball going on right now. So that gives me something to watch. Um, and just, you know, we've been fooling around in our little, uh, little, um, meeting room right here. We didn't made a four square, we got a little Fisher price hoop. So we, we've been trying to keep each other, you know, busy and, uh, moving. So. Kirk Bowles. Yeah, Matt, uh, coach smart said usually when a team gets up tight, it's usually one or two guys, not the whole team. Uh, who are those that you're most concerned with as the leader to keep them loose and, and not getting too uptight Saturday night? Um, nobody in particular. Um, I think it's just as a team. Uh, yeah, some guys may get tighter than others, but I think as a team, because we all will have our moments, um, no matter no matter what, um, no matter in any period of game, we all may have our moments of, you know, being, you know, too tight, not being loose or whatever it may be, but it's not just a few guys. It's, 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 it's going to be uh, everybody. Hopefully it's not, but I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah, so. Sam from Dallas, go ahead. Hey, uh, I'm working on a story on, uh, or excuse me, I'm asking this question on behalf of someone who's working on a story. I'm curious just from the outside, uh, you know, we've all seen the inspiring story of Andrew Jones fighting back from cancer. And I'm curious how he's, uh, you know, inspired you personally. Um, just of his perseverance, and I just remember two years ago when he was working out, and he had the he had the um, the bag around attached to him while he was practicing. Just he was doing anything just to be on the court, um, and that's just that's right there. It's just 
everything you need to know about him. Like he, he loves the game of basketball and he's a uh, man. It's, it, it was just, I, I can't put it into words how just inspiring it was and just his heart and his, his, I don't know. It just tell you a, a lot about him when I was able to see that and just to see this, uh, his growth over time. It's just, it's surreal. It's surreal. Dennis, go ahead, please. Matt, you've never shied away from the crunch time moment, the pressure. What? Why are you built for this stage, for this time, and how long have you been like that? What? Where did it come from? I'm from Virginia, baby. That's why. <laughs> that's it, it, that's 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 in my bloodline. That's just how that's how we do it in the seven five seven. Reese Becker from fifth quarter. Go ahead, please. Hey, Matt, can you talk to me about your relationship with Shaka Smart, how, how it's progressed throughout these four years? I know you've known him for a long time. Um, I think, uh, Like I said earlier, it's just, there's been a lot of, there's been days where I didn't want to see him. Um, when I was probably embarrassed, uh, we lost a game, or there's been other days where I wanted to see him. Uh, I wanted to talk to him, wanted to watch film. Um it just is over this time. I just I appreciate him for uh, just sticking with me, being there for me whenever I needed to, uh, for believing in me. The days I didn't believe in myself, um, and, and I'm just happy for him that he gets to experience this again while he's at Texas, and he's happy for me that I get to experience this uh, my senior year. So it's a it's a love love and love relationship, man. And it's been a lot of a uh, lot of tears. A lot of smiles, but uh, just happy to be in the position we are now. Got time for one last one. Roger Wallace, go ahead. Hey, Matt, we've seen some pictures on social media, guys getting out playing badminton. Are you guys getting outside and doing anything goofy like that? Because as you talked about, you're starting to get anxious to play. Yeah, I didn't get outside yesterday. I'll probably get out there today, but they have like a baseball field right across the street with a little outside door activities. You know, I may may touch in that. I don't want to mess up my basketball skills, but we'll see what, what I can do.